All right, 50 years ago tomorrow, you and Dan Gurney won Le Mans, and to this day, people still talk about it. They don't talk about, and they talk about your 4500 wins, and they talk about going from last to first in a midget race at Terre Haute, but this is one of the defining moments of your great career. Did they have to, did they have to bend your arm behind your back to make you, I can't imagine you wanting to do it. Well, actually, to be truthful with you, I was supposed to go over in 1966, and I got burnt, remember, at Milwaukee, right. and Ken Miles, and uh, two, another one, I can't remember his name, uh, lost his life, you know, and Lloyd Ruby crashed his airplane, so then that's when they decided, well, they lost a lot of their drivers, so we went over in 67, so I was happy because I've known Carol Shelby for a year, and it was actually two Ford programs, Holman Moody and Carol Shelby, and so when they asked me to drive with Dan Gurney, I was honored because I knew Dan knew the racetrack and that, and I was a rookie. I knew nothing about the racetrack. In today's world, you probably got a whole week of practice to learn the track. You learned on the fly. You, you had no practice, right? No practice, no test sessions. No test, and I probably had two or three laps, and, you know, Dan, he qualified the car and all that. He come in, and... Uh, I said, man, <laughs> I can't remember who I followed. I followed a car that was always leading the race pretty good after we pitted, and I followed him three or four laps, then went on past, and I had to learn the track that way, and lucky enough, we led it almost all night and all day, so. Alonzo came and took his rookie test, and then he had a week of practice at Indy, and, and did a really nice job at the Indy 500. You went to Le Mans, having never seen the track, no test day, no, when was your first practice session? Well, actually, the first practice session, I think, that I went out was the morning before qualifying, and Dan was supposed to qualify the car, because he had a lot of experience over there running it, so. I was just, after the first shift, I think, four hour shifts, I was to get in and I think when I pull out of the pits, I think Dennis Hume went by and I knew Dennis and I knew he knew the racetrack good, so I followed him about, I guess, three or four laps and then uh, I was just so much faster, so I just went on about my way. <laughs> Lucky enough, we finished. Here's what I, what cracks me up is, is people, I was looking at some old papers and magazines stories, they said, can Foyt and Gurney get along? Like they were trying to make it like you guys didn't like each other. It was just the opposite. No, we've, I've known Gurney for years and he's known me and I knew he was a hell of a road racer and I was glad to be honored to be driving with Dan Gurney because, uh, and I knew Carol Shelby knew a lot more about road racing and Holman Moody, you know, and so it's actually two factory teams competing against each other, you know, and that was the biggest thing, and so I was on the right factory team. But here's what's cool. You're running at night in the rain, and you're pulling away from people, and people just thought, well, here's this guy that's an Indy 500 winner, he's a dirt driver, he's not, you know, he's not a, he's not a real road racer. I think that proved to the world what a good road racer you were. Well, I never cared that much for road racing. Fortunately enough, it seemed that I got along with it pretty good. But uh, I liked the rain. It wasn't that bad. You just had to. And one thing about the rain, I had some good eyesight, and I think that's what plays a big part. My eyes at that time was 2015, and like I said, I enjoyed running in the rain. It it was kind of hairy and tricky, so you had to play it cool. Did. <laughs> the thing I, I like too is is the fact that you were just kind of not you know it was kind of like well it was another racetrack another race car and yeah we won Le Mans that was kind of fun we sprayed champagne but you had an innate ability to go fast in anything you ever got in but to do it in that situation to me I think that's gonna be one of the three or four best drives of your life well it was a great ride and one thing about the cars today they got three to four or five drivers they got seats it's all adjustable Gurney was so much bigger than I was at the time his arms are about four or five inches longer so I tell you what it was pretty rough and we kind of split the difference and nowadays the way they, they all got to have their special seats and all that and we had to do with what we had and that's the way it was then and like I say, it's a different ball game with the drivers today than what it was back then. Of course, we was all hungry, we was wanting to win, and if you didn't win, you didn't get no money. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, I saw the car at Dan's shop a couple years ago, and he goes, he took the tarp off, and he goes, look at this. I mean, it was such a tiny little driver's seat. No no cushioning or anything like that, and your gear shift st st stuck up against you. I mean, that wasn't exactly the lug lap of luxury driving that thing. Well, you know, another thing, we couldn't adjust the seat, and he was so much bigger. You know, if you notice the car had a big bubble on the top, he was so much taller. So we split the difference, and 
I wasn't that comfortable, and I know he probably wasn't that comfortable, but we was great teammates, and we was over there to win for Ford Motor Company, and that's what was on our mind. It come home first. So you couldn't adjust the pedals or anything when you made your switches, driver switches? No, no. He just kind of split the difference, and that was it. And <laughs> the only thing he could do is tighten the seat belts to loosen them. I don't worry. Tighten is a good idea. What Did you know who your, was Ferrari your competition or Porsche? Did you know who you had to beat? Well, I think Ferrari was the big competition at that time. They was winning everything. And Mr. Ford had just got married to, I guess, a lady, an Italian lady. And she said there's no way that Ford Motor Company can outrun the Ferrari. So he was determined that the Ford Motor Company was going to outrun Ferrari. And they did. They did a lot of work. And, you know, and like I said, uh, it was a great they had two top teams, you know, from the United States, and we didn't go over there to run second. <laughs> the other thing that was cool is after it was over, they said, AJ, you're going back. And you said, why would I go back? Well, I went over as a rookie and come back a winner, so I guess I'm going back now 50 years later, and it's an honor to go back. I like to see how much difference it is. I know the racetrack's a lot different than when we ran it. I understand Malsane Strait. They got crash walls before. The only crash walls you had, they whitewashed trees at night, <laughs> about seven foot, and you're running over 200 mile an hour. And it was kind of spooky. You knew if you went off, you was in a lot of trouble. Well, I think two things you're going you're going back to Le Mans which is really cool and Ansel Ford is like over the moon that you're going to go and secondly you can take your own Texas food because there can't be anything where you like to eat well I hope it's changed a lot the hotels <laughs> and all that's all I can do. they have some steaks well, I don't know that yet. Yeah, French steak. It's nothing beats Texas steaks. That's right. We understand that. Well, Tex, I'll just tell you that uh, it's pretty cool that you and Gurney are still kicking and still reliving great memories, and we'll be looking forward to seeing you at Le Mans next week. Thanks for the time. Well, I hope I have a lot of fun. I know I will. <laughs>